We're getting into Proteus today, episode three. This is a real slimy shapeshifter of a chapter, but who or what is Proteus? Among other things, this is the chapter where many people quit reading because it's so challenging and confusing. Unlike the previous two chapters, I think this is actually a better chapter. You may not think that way at first, but if you stick with it and come back to it, I think it will become of the three. The most, uh, so many ideas are packed into this chapter. And if you're frustrated, if you're confused and you want to quit because you think the rest of the book is going to be like this, trust me, it is very different. Every chapter after this is going to be different from all the others. They're all, Joyce is trying all kinds of different experiments, techniques. He's going to have a totally different characters in the next chapters. So just uh, stick with it or skip this chapter and come back and read it some other time. It's not going anywhere. But let's look at what actually happens in this chapter. Not much. Stephen Daedalus, he's just left, he left his school. So he's at this beach place and he's just walking on the beach. And that's pretty much all that happens. And he talks. No, he doesn't even really talk, I don't think. Maybe. He just sees like a few people, a dog. And that's it. And he, he picks his nose. That's something that happens. Not much else happens. Wait, I take it back. That's just the surface structure. Underneath that, though, there's so much going on in his mind. All these poetic ramblings and philosophical digressions that go on for all kinds of things are going on. And he assumes that you know all these things that imply so much. The implications of his thought and the things that he's read and ex been exposed to. His history and the things that he's done and where he's gone in the last year. All that he's going to cover in some way, shape or form. And if you're not hip with what's going on, you're going to be very confused. But I'll help you as much as I can. Uh, first off, where are we? Let's take a look at the map. You all remember Dublin? So Stephen was down here at the school, remember teaching in chapter or episode two. And to get up to here, several miles, so it's possibly walked, but probably more likely is that there was an electric tram system that we'll talk about later. It would easily allow him to get to the beach much more quickly and with a lot less walking. So that's probably what he did. And here is Sandy Mount Strand, and that is where this chapter takes place. It seems to be at low tide. When I was there, I realized this now, that it was probably at high tide because the, the actual coast was not as large and doesn't seem to quite match the description that Stephen's talking about. But I think that just is because there's a significant difference between low and high tide, and uh, I think that would expose a great deal more of the shore. If you go there today, there's this factory thing across the water not present at the time of the book, so it wasn't yet blighting the skyline. So what is this name, Proteus? Let's figure out what the connection is to the Odyssey. In the Odyssey, after the Trojan War, all these guys from Greece were trying to get back to Greece, and they took ships usually. Some of them took long time to get back to Greece. Ithaca, for example, uh, Odysseus took like 20 years or something. Some of these other guys, they never made it back, they died. And some of them had adventures too. There's their own, they have their own myths about them. One of these guys was this guy named Menelaus. He was this king in Greece. He was stuck like on an island or something. And there was this sea god or river god, a water god. His name was Proteus. And he could change shapes and he could become a goat or a, a tree or a piece of lettuce, whatever he wanted. He could um, also tell things about uh, what was going on in the world and about the future. So he had like super magic -y powers, right? Menelaus, he's trying to get back home, but for some reason there was no wind because one of the gods must have been angry at him. One of the people's like, no wind for this guy. He's never going to make it home. So what does Menelaus do? He says, if I cap, 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 <laughs> if I capture <laughs> Proteus, this guy, this minor god guy, I'll just hold him and make him tell me what I need to know to get back home. So that's what he did. And uh, he catches him and Proteus changes shape. And finally, uh, he becomes himself or something. And uh, he reveals to Menelaus not just how to get home, but what had happened to some of Menelaus's other uh, soldiers from the Trojan War, including Odysseus. So Telemachus 
Remember the Odysseus' son back in Ithaca is trying to figure out where his father is. So he goes and talks to Menelaus and Menelaus tells him this story and says like, um, yeah, he was on the island of Calypso uh, for some reason. And uh, that's what I know. So Telemachus is like, aha. Now, even though Telemachus is loosely connected to Stephen in this chapter, he's actually going to be the one who encounters uh, Proteus. Did, that, did any of that make sense, by the way? Uh, Joyce doesn't care. I told you this before about how, how strict these parallels are with the Odyssey. He just uses them as a springboard. So this guy, uh, Menelaus, there is, I don't think there's even an equivalent, maybe there is, in, the, in Ulysses, but we have Telemachus as Stephen Daedalus. He's the one who's going to be struggling with this fish god, <laughs> this uh, but instead of the God, he encounters his mind, the universe, how he interprets the universe, all these things that he's thinking about, and it's constantly changing. It's constantly um, doing these things. But if Stephen can apprehend it and capture it in the prose that he's writing as, as Joyce years later, then he will be able to know things about what is happening and see into the future as Joyce does. That was a lot of explaining to do. I hope that made sense. I'm going to keep going and do another video because there's a lot to unpack in this chapter. I may do like a breakdown just of the first paragraph in the next video. I have ideas. I, this may take several videos or maybe just one more. I don't know, but we're going to stop for now because you know now where this takes place and generally what happens. So let's move on.